Hey, patricians, we need more rights and stuff. No. Today, we'll talk about the history of Rome, the Roman Republic. Now, Rome was a monarchy, and the new king was Numa Pompilius. There was also a senate full of senators, and they were the king's advisors. Though, ultimately, the king decided to take their advice or not. The city got bigger, and the kings would build temples, public offices, and sometimes they would brutally overthrow each other. And each king would be king until their death. The Romans were committed to this particular approach for a while. Until one day, there was this king who was a complete asshole, called Tarquinius Superbus, who had a son called Sextus, who was a complete asshole too. And everything got out of control when he violated the integrity of a lady called Lucretia, and Lucretia unalived herself. This outraged the Roman people, who rebelled, overthrew the monarchy, and declared that a king would never rule them again. So they formed a republic, which is a form of government where citizens have the power, allegedly, because they get to choose their leaders. This is how the Roman Republic began. Now, they had not just one, but two leaders, who were called consuls, and they would rule for a year, until they were changed by voting. And the senators, they could remain senators, that's fine. At this time, the Roman society was made up of patricians, that is, wealthy landowners who had many rights, and could hold religious and political office. And plebeians, who were farmers, artisans, merchants, and people who had other unexciting jobs. All these had no rights and couldn't hold public office. But you can always vote to choose who of us will govern you. Really? Okay, bye. And they left Rome. Now, the patricians felt lonely, because they had no one to boss around. So they sent someone to tell him to come back, please, and to also offer them some rights. So the plebeians came back, and now there were tribunes, who were the representatives of the plebeians. This is known as the first plebeian secession, and to make sure that from now on, everything would be fair, the law of the Twelve Tables was created. This was a set of laws that were written on Twelve Tables and put in the Roman Forum so everyone could read them. For the Romans, the most important thing was their army, which was made up of legions and centuries, and it was getting bigger and more powerful. So they did what big and powerful armies do, conquer others. So the Romans began to conquer stuff, like the Italic Peninsula, including all their gods, which they kept because it felt nice. And all conquered beings could enjoy the rights of the Twelve Tables, except voting. They couldn't vote. Rome continued to expand and grow stronger, trading by land and the sea. Who are those? Carthaginians. Who are those? Some other guys expanding their land and trading all over the place too, but with elephants. Don't like that. So they had no choice but to go to war. And this is known as the Punic Wars. And here's the link. And when the Punic Wars ended, they continued to abuse, conquer more earth space, gaining more wealth and becoming bigger they had already conquered lots of things. Oh no. oh no. The Twelve Tables haven't been useful lately. In Rome, the rich were getting richer, and the poor were getting poorer. Because soldiers, after having fought crazy battles, returned home and were rewarded with nothing. And now, they were forced to work as farmers 
while the wealthy enjoyed the luxury of owning slaves, which gave them better farms and allowed them to control the farm market. And always remember, we need support. Giving us support is super easy. You can subscribe, leave a comment, and or share this video. Remember, always give us support. Thank you. So the soldiers ended up selling their farms to the rich and working for them. That's why this guy started making laws to help the poor, but was killed. Because of this, his brother also started making laws to help the poor, but was persecuted, and then he took his own life. For all these reasons, the army just wasn't feeling it anymore. And now, they were not really into political loyalty. But they did care about the land and the nice things some military leaders were offering to those who fought for them. Things got pretty heated between them, until the conflict turned into a full-on civil war over who would control Rome. But one of those men became stronger, more famous and popular, and would take over Rome and lead it to its greatness. I lead Rome to greatness. No, I will. No, obviously, I will lead Rome to greatness. No, I will lead Rome to greatness. No,